Hey guys, I'm John. Thanks for checking out this week's message. At Hope City, we're always so encouraged to hear how God is bringing the hope of Jesus to people through this ministry. If God has used this ministry to bring hope to your life, we would love to hear about it. To share your story, you can simply email us at lifechange at hopecityonline.net. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can simply text any amount to the number below. It's a safe and secure way to support the work that God is doing through Hope City Church. Now, let's prepare our hearts for a message out of God's Word. We are in the middle of a series right now called Shut Your Face. We try to think of the nicest, most encouraging thing we could title a series to start our year. And this is what we came up with, hashtag shut your face. And the entire premise behind the series is we're looking at what our lives look like when we choose to close our mouth rather than sharing all of the thoughts that run across our mind. And what we're going to be focusing on for just a few minutes, and when I say a few minutes, a very, very few minutes this morning, is that word that we kind of kicked off this conversation with this morning, and that is gossip. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. Put that at the very top real big. And gossip is very simply defined as this, talking about somebody else. Now notice, I didn't say talking bad about somebody else. I didn't say talking bad about somebody who's done something wrong because we, here, here's what we do. We take gossip and we, we mix it as much as we can into the gray area of life so that we can justify what it is that we're saying because of where we're at or because of who we're with or because of what somebody has done or because it's something that we desperately need to talk to somebody about. We muddy the waters and we say, well, this is not really gossip. This is more just sharing. Well, this is not really gossip. This is more just caring. No, 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 it's gossip because gossip is very simply defined as talking about somebody else. And man, we love to do it. It's like sugary goodness in our mouth. It feels all so good when we get to gossip about somebody else. And I can't, I can't tell you why there's no benefit in it whatsoever. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't benefit the other people. But the problem is all of us love to do it even though there is no benefit. Let me give you a great example. The other night, we're at Target. I'm at Target with my family, and my wife is in the back getting a few more things, and, she, and, and our daughter Callie says, um, I need to go to the bathroom. So my wife said, can you take Callie to the bathroom? At which point in our house, the way that works is when one kid says, I need to go to the bathroom, then another kid says, I need to go to the bathroom too, then another kid says, I need to go to the bathroom too. So now I'm toting all three kids up to the front, and if you've ever been to Target, you know the store is laid out. The bathrooms are right there at the front door. So I'm taking all three kids up to the front to go to the bathroom. Now, anybody who has children of multiple sexes, so if you've got a boy and a girl, you can feel my pain here. When you go to the bathroom, you are praying that there is a family restroom. Why? Because you don't want to take your three-year-old daughter in there with a bunch of like weird, strange men. And at the same time, you're certainly not going to try to figure out what your daughter is doing in a bathroom by herself because you're not going in there with a bunch of ladies. And so you're praying for a family restroom, right? And we love shopping at Target because our kids have to go to the bathroom every single store we go into and Target has a family restroom. So I'm making my way up there to the family restroom. We're getting ready to walk into the family restroom. And right before we turn to go down the hallway where the bathrooms are, a Target employee, a guy who was out in the parking lot picking up carts, comes in the door and cuts right in front of me and makes his way into the family restroom by himself, right? There's a men's room. There's multiple stalls. And what does this crackhead do? He comes into the family restroom, seeing that I got three kids in tow. He goes in and locks the door. And I, let me just tell you, my Jesus hat came off and I about lost my ever loving mind, right? Like, you want to talk about a pet peeve for me? It's individual people using the family restroom. When you got kids out there that are screaming, they got to go to the bathroom, they got to go to the bathroom. And, and you got somebody taking up the family restroom and they ain't got no family, right? And so he's in the, and so I'm, I'm just, I'm just so frustrated. So Caleb, my son, my voice of reason says, dad, we'll just go in the men's room. We'll put Callie in a stall. It'll be okay. And I said, I know, I know. And I walked by the family restroom and I went, he said, somebody's in here. I said, you're going to hell. And then walked on into, and then, and then, walk, and then walked on into the men's room so that I would be gone when he, when he came back out. But here's what's interesting. So, so, so my wife, my wife uh, checks out and I meet her at the front of the store. And what's the first thing that I got to do? 
I got to tell her about this idiot who took up the family restroom. Now, what benefit did it do her to know about the guy who took up the family restroom? None whatsoever. What benefit did it do me to tell about this guy being in the family restroom? None whatsoever. What benefit did it give this guy who was still in the family restroom? Nothing whatsoever. But I felt the urge to tell somebody about it. Like, let me tell you what this idiot, let me tell you what this loser did. Let me tell you what this, this joker that doesn't even deserve to be working at Target. I mean, I had lost lost my ever-loving mind at this point, right? Because I, I, I had had something that I felt was done wrong to me or, or, or just wrong in general, and I felt the need to share it. Why? Because we love talking about other people's mistakes, other people's bad decisions, other people's misfortunes. We love talking about other people in general. In fact, let me give you a, just a crazy statistic. So I, um, I've been watching it all week and I wanted to get the most recent one. So last night I ran the, the search again. But I wanna tell you what the top trending topics are on social media right now. Like as we're meeting together in here, in this room right now, let me tell you what the top trending topics. Now I went ahead and I removed all the political stuff. And the reason I removed the political stuff because you could make the argument that that somehow affects your life so you feel the need to say something about it. So I removed that out of the way and I'm only talking about the topics that have nothing to do with you. Yet these are the top trending topics in the world right now. Let me tell you what they are real quick. All right, number one is Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer is a trending topic because apparently she's got a new boyfriend and everybody's been wanting to know when Amy Schumer was finally gonna get a new boyfriend. And some of you are going, I don't even know who Amy Schumer is. I can't help that. I'm just telling you that more people in the world are talking about Amy Schumer than any other topic in the world. The second one, is Lady Gaga and Taylor Kinney. Taylor Kinney is her boyfriend and apparently they did some kind of cover on V Magazine where they're not wearing a lot of clothes. And so everybody is talking about their cover shoot and talking about what they think about their cover shoot. And then uh, the third one is apparently Hugh Hefner is selling the mansion. Just in case anybody wanted to know that, he's selling the mansion. So if any guys in here need a plate, no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Hugh Hefner is selling the mansion and that has nothing to do with you and nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with 90% of the world, 99% of the world but it's a trending topic in the world. And apparently Lamar Odom got out of the hospital. Everybody's been really concerned about Lamar Odom. Um, he finally got out of the hospital. And if you're sitting here right now going, I don't know any of these people, God bless you. You are in good company, right? The truth of the matter is we spend an inordinate amount of time talking about people, situations, and things that have nothing to do with us. And do you know what that's called? Gossip. And we justify it, right? Well, it was on the news. Well, just because it was on the news doesn't mean it wasn't gossip. Anytime we're talking about somebody else and it doesn't affect our life directly, it's gossip and we love it as humans. Here's the problem. And I've watched this take place in the local church and I've watched this take place on a broader scale with people in the world like these celebrities. The problem is gossip faster than anything else, will destroy relationships, will destroy confidences. It destroys your integrity when you use it. It rips apart families. It implodes churches. Why? Because if you'll remember last week, we talked about the fact that this thing right here is an insanely powerful weapon and one of the most dangerous pieces of ammunition you can place in it is gossip. Man, y'all must love gossip because I'm not getting no amens, no love. Nobody say anything. You're like, man, he's talking about me. I just need to keep my mouth shut, keep my head down. Maybe if I just play Candy Crush, nobody will pay attention to me. Listen, this is why the scripture spends an, an inordinate amount of time talking about gossip. In fact, God doesn't say that he hates a whole lot. Matter of fact, you can count 10 things or less that God hates throughout the scriptures. And one of them is gossip. And it comes before Murder. God hates gossip more than murder because of the way that it rips apart and destroys families. Let me just read to you a few of the scriptures. We'll start out in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. If you got your Bible, you can flip along, but we're gonna be moving pretty fast, so you may just wanna follow along on the screen. Proverbs 20, 19 says, a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid anyone who talks too much. This, listen, let me, let me just tell you, this is not just telling you to quit gossiping. It's telling you to stop hanging around people who gossip. And if you're wondering, that means you should never hang out with me because I talk more than anybody on the planet and I get in more trouble than anybody on the planet. So don't hang out with people like your pastor. You shouldn't hang out with people like me. Don't hang out with people who talk too much. Why? Because they will get you in trouble too. James 4.11 says this, brothers and sisters, 
Do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother, and watch this, this is crazy. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. The law that it's referencing is the law of God, basically speaking against the character and the heartbeat of God himself. And when you judge the law, you're not keeping it, but you're sitting in judgment on it. Basically saying when you gossip, basically what you're saying is I'm better than God's final word on things. My words on things are more important than God's final word on things. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, the scripture says this, avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. And this is just a few, this is like a microcosm of a, an entire um, subculture of verses that are found all throughout the scripture, Old and New Testament. Because gossip is one of the most destructive things we can allow to come out of our mouth. And one of the reasons why I'm becoming more and more convinced that it's so destructive is because we don't even recognize. We don't even recognize that we're doing it half the time because we justify it. So I want to give you just a few tips real quick. And then I want to read you one other passage of scripture and we'll get you out of here this morning. But I want to give you three tips real quick to help you avoid gossiping. If you're taking notes, I want you to write these down. These are super, super important. I want you to make sure you take them with you. Three rules to help you avoid gossiping. Um, number one, don't talk about people, period. Don't talk about people. Circle about, underline about. Don't talk about people, all right? Number two, when you're with a really close friend enjoying a nice conversation and perfectly paired Sauvignon Blanc, you may start chatting about folks in your close circle of friends. When you start to do that, read number one again, <laughs> right? Even those really, really close friends. And then finally, rule number three, if it seems like a perfectly justified and innocent time to share and you're doing it out of the spiritual well-being of that person and you have good intentions and no malice in your heart, Read number one again. Don't talk about people. And you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, you said it's one of the things that we naturally do, that it tastes so good, that it's so difficult not to do. If you're just saying don't talk about people, but it's something we naturally do, how do we go about this? How do we fill our appetite of wanting to talk about what people are doing wrong? Well, Jesus gives us this unbelievable roadmap. And here's why. Because he knows that you and I aren't going to be able to control this. He knows that when we hear about people doing wrong, when we see people doing things that we don't like, when there are unjustified things going on around us, we will talk about it. So just saying don't talk about it isn't good enough. There has to be a second part to this rule. Second part of this rule is found in the book of Matthew chapter 18. If you got a Bible, I want you to flip over there really quick. quick. Matthew chapter 18, we're going to be picking it up in verse 15. This is what the scripture says. So if we're not going to talk about people, what should we do? If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault to your mama, to your cousin, to somebody on Facebook. Go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they won't listen, take one or two others along. And look, you're going right back to that person so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Basically, here's what that means. If you ever come and tell me something and I give you some advice on how you need to fix it in your life and you don't apply that, you better watch out showing up here on Sundays because I'll tell the whole church about it. Because Matthew 18 said, I can, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to do that. But the answer is, the answer is, if you have a problem with somebody, don't talk about them, talk to them. We, we're really, really, like we're, we're itching to say something. We're itching to talk. We're itching to make a big deal. We want desperately for it to fall out of our mouth. And you know what God's saying to you and me? Yes, I want it to fall out of your mouth too because I want to use you to help sharpen your brother or your sister. I want to use you to help make them better. I want to use you for my glory instead of yours. See, when you gossip, you're trying to build your own credibility. You're trying to wiggle your way into a conversation for your own sake. You're trying to benefit you. And when you take that same insatiable desire to talk about someone and use it to talk to them, all of a sudden you're bringing glory to your Father in heaven. 
And just so you know, that's what we were created to do. We were created to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. We were created to be extensions of God himself in the world. And when we gossip, people see us. And usually they don't like us. But when we go to somebody and we talk to somebody directly, people see God. They see the fingerprints of God. So what's the takeaway today? It's really simple. When you think about something that you want to say about someone, shut your face and go to them and edify them and build them up. And help them become better. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, shed his blood and died on the cross to give us the opportunity to live in fellowship and relationship with his Father so that we would have the privilege and the opportunity to speak life into other people because of God speaking life in to us. See, Robbie, that's the shortest sermon I've ever heard you preach. I know because Doug went really, really long. And I want you to take that with you, and I want you to apply it today. I'm going to make it really practical for you. Think of somebody you've got an issue with right now that you're tempted to go and talk about this week. And instead, pick up the phone, schedule a coffee, go meet with them. And let's begin to be difference makers rather than relationship breakers. Let me pray for you. God, we love you, and we thank you for the opportunity we have to be your ambassadors in the world. God, I pray more than anything else that we would apply things like this to our life so that we would recognize the fact that you want to quench the thirst in our heart and our soul, but you want to do it by transforming who we are. So help us to walk out of this place different than we came in, and may we find fulfillment in it as a result. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.